But the bottom line is, they were there. And they enjoyed everything that was going on. And they supported everything that was going on. And it kept life happening. You know, every, everybody was dealing with whatever they had to do. Everybody was able to uh, make a living however they chose, you know. Some good, some bad. But they managed to hang on until they couldn't hang on no more. The the Jader digs, you were getting, you weren't just getting the door. I mean, you were getting money. Like when I joined the Cal Jader, I, I've got a salary. It's a salary. So you you didn't need to, you know, like we were talking with George, and you know, he was an aerospace guy, and he and he, yeah. and he had and he, and he played. I mean, he still played mm -hmm. when gigs came around, mm -hmm. but he was steeped in that, and he's and he's good, better off for it. But you know what? Like for you, you you had a salary. You could you could you were a musician. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You could put that the best, down. The yeah. best thing about Cal was not only did I have a salary, uh, he was taking out taxes and. The whole gamut, you know, it had a home base at the El Matador in San Francisco. We worked there as long as we were in town. When we went out on the road, we got we got more money on the road than we did when we were at, at home. And I wasn't at home, so I, I made a uh, road salary when I was at the home base gig, which was the El Matador. What what was the road trips like? What were we on buses? What were we doing? Were we doing? How were we no, what, what happened with, with Cal, yeah. we flew everywhere we went. Yeah. Now, Monk taught me the road. Man. He uh, said, man, uh, Cal's about to fire the, the roadie. Let's take the job and uh, drive the truck. We got to set up the instruments and stuff anyway. So we'll drive the truck. We get paid for driving the truck. Cal will give us the, the, the plane fare. And uh, we get paid for setting up the instruments. <laughs> <laughs> you, <gotta do> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the road, man. You knew the road. So oh. we made extra and, and drove everywhere. Now, I remember one time driving from L.A., to New York in seventy two hours and played a played a gig when we got there. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was some of the insanities that sometimes took place. That wasn't often but that time it did. Yeah. There there was you know there was an all natural trip. Yeah, it was yeah, you know. And and the truck even broke down once. <laughs> <laughs> you made, you made, you made. <laughs> we stopped. The mechanic fixed it. We kept on going, man. We got there. When we got there, went right to the place, set up the stuff, played the job. Where are the, where are the rocks in the in the black community now? Where's the Monk Montgomerys? Where where are the Carl Burnett's? What 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 kind of person in the black community do they represent? Is there anyone in the black community today that is like that has the character, the moxie? I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. Now I had a theater in LA for about eight years. Yeah. And uh, I had workshops for musicians, poets, writers, actors. We had many concerts and one or two act plays, workshops for uh, singers, poets, writers, and actors. And we did, you know, productions. We we had seminars. We had classes. We taught people what uh, uh, how to copyright uh, your music, you know, how, how to dress. Education. Education. It's education. You know, what a manager's for. Right. What a promoter's for. Yeah. All of these things we try to make people aware of, you know, so that uh, when they go and get into business, if you're interested in really doing it, you, you at least had an idea what you were going to be faced with. You know, some people, uh, you know, you're going to be a writer, you, you're going to probably lose some, some of your songs in order to establish yourself. You may have to give away some of your, some of your music in order to establish yourself. And some people had to do that, but they created the music so they were able to create it enough so that they were able to eventually get their stuff back and, and continue to grow. But uh, that's the way uh, the business was. How do you, how do you see the, how do you see the, the, 
the business side of things in, in that in the industry now? Uh, I don't. I don't look at it. Yeah. I don't look at it now. I mean, I see the different things happening. I see people doing things. I haven't been working mm -hmm. as a musician. I haven't been been doing any any work as a musician. I've gotten away from it. In fact, after the theater, uh, when I left there. I think uh, Billy Higgins and Kamal, they, they got my chairs and, and the stage that we had been performing on, and, and uh, they called their place World Stage, and that's still you saw it today. functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, but I left and moved to Pasadena, and uh, I didn't play any music for four years, man. I just had to get away from it, because uh, I got to a place where uh, it was hard to work in town because people in town said, well, you locals, so we don't want to pay you, you know, what you're asking. Plus, you got your own club. So I ended up having to go out of town just to work. So I wore out my family, I wore out my friends, trying to keep my place open. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, this you is know? real. This is real life. Yeah. It's real life. Yeah, man. Can you talk about the, the, what, you know, after playing with Cal, what what happens when you you, know, you leave that time? Fill in the blanks between that and the theater. In the theater? Yeah. No, we, there's oh, there's yeah. way too there, oh, there's, yeah. we can't just yeah. do we, there's too many blanks. There's just because see what what ended up happening. What I realized was happening with Cal. Um, I really got close to uh, Armando Peraza, mm -hmm. and. Uh, really begin to understand uh, clave, mm -hmm. which is keeping time, being able to keep time, we didn't play time. Yeah. And uh, once I understood that, I realized that, uh, gee, that was a key to everything. Right. Right. So I figured, okay, I got this together, what's the next thing for me to do to try to complete myself? So then the opportunity came for me to join the Three Sounds. So I joined the Three Sounds because that gave me an opportunity to learn how to play the blues and learn how to play straight ahead. Uh, oh, it was getting uh, funky at that time. Dude. Yeah, it was yeah. getting real yeah. funky at that yeah. time. You, the, that, there's, there's the Indelible album, for me, is master arranging by Monk Higgins. Uh, or, uh, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to figure it out <coughs> that piece, the Soul Symphony, mm -hmm. okay? To date, the longest track of uh, one of the more complex pieces of music that I've, I've really ever come across. At, at the mm -hmm. time, was that, re was that played on, on AM radio? Was that track Not played? Not AM, no. Well, all, whatever, all, anyway. all, of the, all of the jazz music. Uh, there was only one, was one station on the air. Uh, there was the Jake Fiber station is what it was. <laughs> wow, okay. There was, I don't, I mean, I don't know. There. there was one station that played jazz on there, man. And um, for the life of me, I can't think of that guy's name. But uh, he was a well-known uh, voice because he used to do commercials. He used to do a lot of voiceovers and, and stuff. Okay, but, 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 but here, have some fun with me. You guys are in rain jackets, and there's animals all over the cover. Mm -hmm. Where was your head at that time? <laughs> but please tell me, because that's the stuff I get off on. That's what I, I show my daughter. Yeah. I show my daughter. I say, you see these guys? I said, man, they were living life, and you need to you need to live. You need to live. Don't get sucked into this yeah. robotic society that that we're turning in. That that's all we're turning into now. <laughs> And that's the, just, just humor. <laughs> okay, now, now, now listen to this. Don't, don't, don't go off the... the, the before, before that yeah. happened. <laughs> you always know. I was still working with Cal. Vince Garaldi came and sat in with us one night. And I said, man, I'm doing this play around the corner. And uh, it's been pretty successful. And uh, we're going to record the music. And I wonder if you and uh, the bass player can do the music with us. So 
So I said, okay, so I'm doing it, make some money. We recorded the first music with Charlie Brown. All of that music that uh, was done. Uh, that was just Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. Yeah. Just the self-titled one. Right. Because there was like, you know, a lot of, you yeah. were, you were, you were, and, and that's the album your, your buddy came over with and, and he's holding hostage until you bought it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I got one that uh, is a CD, but the melody is so low that you can't hear the melody. Wow. So it was not recorded right. It, I don't know what happened. So he was doing, a, it was, it was a, it was a play. Yeah, for live audiences. Yeah, and you were in the pit. No, like they were they were playing. Now we, we, we what we did. We were in the studio and recorded the music. Right. But uh, the play was still going on. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that album immediately. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> you're on skins on that. You're on drum. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good grief. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good grief. <laughs> Maybe we'll break that out on Thursday night. You know. Yeah. Whoa, man. You know, and and yeah. and, and 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 so Gene. Why, why don't we take a little bit of time to talk about Gene Harris? Because, uh, yeah. you know, you told I, I kind of, I, you kind of floored me the other night when you talked about um, the work that you did with him, and then you went to Blue Notes for an advance yeah. on new for new music, and they said, "Well, we're not doing that much anymore," and it broke Gene's heart. Can you, I mean, I, can I mean, you, they, they said uh, uh, we spent the money for uh, promotion. And we only have a certain amount of money that we spend for promotion. And we spent the budget. So uh, that's it. So I said, well, man, we got the number three record. You know, if we just have a little help, you know, we can do something with it. Because we were, things were happening as a result of it, you know. I said, no, we don't, we don't do that. Then this and that's it. It was the number three record. They weren't making money off that? You know, they were making money, but he didn't care about jazz. That's when, you know, he realized that, hey, man, jazz is a write off. So, it, uh, it's kind of, it really kind of broke his heart, I think. Yeah. You talk eloquently. I don't think I can ask anyone better to talk about. The thing that I've been, I mean, he's going to lose his mind if he hears me barking about it again. Mm -hmm. This idea of, um, but I just think it's prescient, uh, the idea of that time period being the end of music as part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk about it. Well, uh, I think at that point, with the, the three sounds, right at the, the end of that first band, the first situation. It, it, you know, we traveled as a, with quite a few different people. At one point, Muck Montgomery was a bass player. At another point, uh, when Muck left, I got Henry in the band. He traveled with the band for a while. Uh, Stan Gilbert, I got him, him in the band, and uh, then we got some other guys, Luther Hughes, and uh, quite a few people got in the band because uh, of what Gene was doing. Uh, Explain to the audience what he was doing, too. He uh, had the ability to uh, play pretty much anything he could think uh, come up with he, he could he could be fluent in it um, stuff just I, came I out of saying stuff came out of his head and he could just play yeah yeah, yeah. you know and, and a lot of people were, were like that but he was uh, so proficient with it that it was like nothing's hard for him uh, every night when we went to work, uh, the first song of the night would be on fire, the fastest you could play. So when you came to work, you better be ready. <laughs> <Get> ready. Wake <laughs> up! 
It was up tempo. Yeah. It was up tempo. It was up tempo. And uh, man, when you finished playing it, it was like okay, everything should be easy after this, right? And uh, then it was a group. Everything should be easy after this. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a buddy of mine. Uh, he's a he's a friend of ours. Uh, he plays bass. You know, he's trying to find his way at this mm -hmm. point. You know, doing his thing. But he he said there's something about playing a gig. You know, again. Three sounds, mm -hmm. different level. Still, you play the music and you and you do something like that, and you just walk away. And, and in your mind, he says everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling he has. It's this feeling of confidence, mm -hmm. like you just said. What, what what can I do at this point? Yeah, but see, that's, the thing is, you never you never know. You never know what's going to happen. That was a bass player who uh, wanted to. Uh, who, he was a good bass player who was playing around town, and I think. I think uh, Roland Haynes was going to leave the band. Bass. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> Jesus. He's a bass player. You're not. That's not true. And, 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 and uh, this bass player, <laughs> his name was was uh, John Dukes. Had been playing with Count Basie and doing quite a few things. He had grown up in Detroit, and he was a trumpet player. And he knew uh, uh, Paul Chambers and... Uh, all of the cats who went to New York and became the giants of, of the music. Sure. But he had paralysis in the side of his face and uh, he couldn't play anymore. So he opened a nightclub and he kept things going with the nightclub. So finally he started playing bass. And uh, eventually the guys went to New York and uh, he and his wife came to California. So uh, he was out here playing and uh, we did a few things together. And when Roland decided to leave, I said, John, why don't you come down and audition, man? James got to get another bass player. So he said, okay, I'll come down. So he came down, and uh, he sat through the first set. And just before we finished the set, he got up and started walking out. I said, oh, wait a minute. I wonder if he, uh, I don't uh, know. You know, I wonder, I don't know what he thinks. Right. And I said, man. All you got to do is let the guy know tonight. You, you got the gig. Roland was leaving. Because he was going to Canada. He was playing back, going back to piano and doing some other stuff. So I went and called him and said, Man, where you going, man? Uh, all you got to do is come and talk to Gene. You know, it's a possibility. It, just, you know, it may work out. He said, I don't want that gig, man. I said, oh, man, why? What's the matter? He said, Man, you got to be willing to die on the bandstand. <laughs> that's you know that, that doesn't necessarily always, that's funny that doesn't always necessarily translate on on studio albums either that, 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 that's good but but going I, 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 I we we divert you know we went off again the idea of gene uh you know he, he, he got real down but yeah. but it was also the time. I, mean, I remember I remember talking to you the first time I called you, and you and you were talking about um, this, this this period where where uh, you know venues got bigger, people got farther away from the musicians. Well, yeah. See, this is, this is basically this is uh, what began to happen with the music. You know, as at that point in the uh, music, the uh, Acid rock and the rock bands were getting bigger and bigger and bigger because the promotion was bigger and bigger and bigger. So they started doing bigger concerts. That was just before, no, that was after. Uh, what was the name of the big outdoor jazz festival that they had? In, uh, the Hollywood Bowl? No, no, no. Uh, in, in, uh, on the East Coast. Newport. Nothing bigger than Newport. Where all the people were sleeping out in the in the fields and uh, it was a yearly Lennox thing. Lennox and Lennox in in, in in Lennox, Mass. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I was uh, born. Uh, no, you weren't there, but it was, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't it was there. A, it was a big outdoor festival, and it rained and people slipping in the mud and all kinds of stuff, and they had all of the rock groups. And Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah, Woodstock. Well, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I thought. I thought 
was thinking jazz. Yeah, you said jazz. Yeah, but that no, was no, the, that no, was like, jazz. No, no, you said no, jazz. That's what I threw mean, me off. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. no. It was it was uh, 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 Hendrix and uh, yeah, they were yeah, all, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah. of the rock groups. It was the hippies things. slipping in the mud, and there was yeah. helicopters. And Those things started taking uh, uh, taking over, kind of, because people started going and, and, and listening to the uh, uh, people were doing acid. Yeah, they were, everybody was getting high. People were tripping out, you know. Getting so high. Uh, it kind of changed things. But what happened? People began to start doing those big concerts. And they started using the big speakers and blasting them real loud and doing all kinds of things. So it made it difficult for jazz artists because people began to start looking at the happening rather than the just the musical experience that was taking place before. Mm. Wow. Uh, so the big situations began to take over and people lost... Um, the vibration that you get in a, a small venue. There's a certain vibration that, that takes place as like a, a cycle that comes from the music to the people and and they feed it back and it's a, like an unknowing uh, happening that takes place that um, really kind of regenerates Everybody that's involved, but in a big situation, it is it, it doesn't happen because of the dynamics with the speakers and, and it's stuff. very sterile. Yeah, so uh, it can happen, but it's it's yeah, the intimacy yeah. of the of the small venue. See, in order to try to do it, they got the big speakers and made the music loud, but in in order to do it, it was damaging to to the ears of people. So they had to get it. They started getting higher. <laughs> to try to compensate. That's the best way I can put it. They, they, the distortion was yeah. so bad, they had to get higher. Yeah. yeah. They get higher. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. It, took, it really took it out, man. So that, that could only last so long. I mean, that's, that fell apart. And then the next level was something else. But by then, uh, the whole concept was lost because whereas music... Musicians before that used to go to a town, and sometimes you stay two weeks, one place, right. you know. But when those concerts started, people started saying, oh, wow, man, why should I go and play here for a week? And uh, I can go over here and play this concert, and I can make as much as I make in a week, I can make that in one day. So I go over and play the concert, and forget about the other situation. Well, uh, it's it's it, it was about it's about it's a value shift. Yeah, there was values. Yeah, because there were other things aside from the the dough that yeah. you were going there for 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 to be cultured. Yeah, you're going there for six seven days. You live with people. You learn how to mentor. You learn how to if someone's struggling, you take care of them. It's a family, right? Yeah. It becomes a family. But see, that was lost. Mm -hmm. Family got lost. Lost. Pivotal. Mm -hmm. I was lost. Right. And, and 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 it hasn't. Um, regenerated. Regenerated. No. That's regenerated. Fact, because it's, it's, yeah. most people aren't even aware of it. Most people aren't even aware of, of that situation, the things that, that happened in those times. It's, it's looked upon like, oh yeah, that was the olden days. Mm -hmm. The value of it is lost. The value of it's lost. That, that seems to me. Jazz mm -hmm. was the closest thing to it that, that uh, we had. To bring in people to uh, share experiences in, in, in those those ways, the same thing. You know, it, it was one of the last of uh, uh, those experiences, and it happened in a lot of different ways. It even happened through uh, the music. I, I told you about uh, how one of the ways that guys. Uh, Trying to reach out was through avant garde music, a whole lot of different things, experiences. People tried other things, and there other things that were happening before, they realized that, shoot, it's, it's weird anyway, we might as well be weird. Yeah. You know, and people started doing strange things, playing in different ways, and, and sometimes uh, 
the guys that were really thinking mm -hmm. created situations that uh, really had life to it. It created a situation that you could really feel, but you had to really concentrate in order to be able to do it. And I used to play with guys who, who were doing it, and sometimes I could follow what was happening, and sometimes I couldn't. But uh, after a time, I realized that there is a form that these guys are playing. They may not be able to express what it is or say what it is, but there's a form that they're playing that uh, if we can channel it, we can deal with this. And um, can, you give an example, was, can you give an example? Well, one day I was looking at TV, and uh, they had one of those uh, missile firings shot out of space. Yeah. And uh, after a, a day, I think, it was supposed to come back into the window. And right. something happened. And it wasn't able to make that window. <laughs> Where did it go? So I said, well, they got to make another revolution because they got you got to come back in through a window. You can't just come back. You got to only come back through a particular window. Right. So I started thinking about that. I said, wow, man, that's what's happening with the music. When the guys are leave the form and go into a, a free mode, they go to a certain place. And then there's certain places where they have to come back. They come back through this window, or if they don't come back, they go down through the next window. So what I started doing was I go out with them, and I try to uh, perceive the window points. And when it got to a place where it felt like it was a window point, I would do whatever it was but stay in conscious of what they did. And if they didn't come back in, and I'd be right there waiting for them, and we finished the tune, and it was like, oh man, it's, they planned this. But you know, it was something that was not really planned. Mm -hmm. But if it didn't come in, I was still uh, able to project to the next window. Because I realized he was coming in to the next window. Because that you have to, when you come to the window, you have to uh, commit, or else you're not going there. But when you make a commitment, then you have to go. So in that commitment, you can come in, and then you you deal with the uh, uh, progression, and it's and it's worked for quite a few people. Quite a few people dealt with the music and and uh, were able to adapt, adapt, but not only adapt, but to show people that. This is coordinated.